Good afternoon, YouTube, and welcome back to Fat Cat Collections once again. Oh man! <laughs> All right, so we have another rant video today, and I just you know a lot of times I feel like uh, when I do these videos, and this is about watches specifically, a certain brand um, and a certain YouTuber. Um, you know, a lot of times when I do videos like this, I don't. First off, I want to be clear. I don't. My goal is never to make clickbait. Okay. Um, I know that sometimes I'm going to put up a video and it's going to be on a topic that might be extremely popular. Um, remember, YouTube, their algorithm is kind of a little secret, you know. I don't work there, so I don't know how it works. But I'll put up videos that I know are going to be better than others. Invicta videos always seem to do a little bit better. All the videos I put up that are review videos about a product I never thought people would even be interested in. Or, or a topic that might, uh, you know, be able to help people that I never would expect to get the views they do. Um, and other times, other products, I'm like, this should do pretty well, and it doesn't. So it really just depends on YouTube and what and the product, the topics, and how they recommend the video. Uh, and you know, and people, people's behavior, people what they're searching for, right? So again, my point is when I when I come across doing these videos, I want to put my opinion out there. And again, when it comes to watches, I'll always be the advocate for the affordable watch brands. I don't just mean Invicta, I don't just mean Aragon, I mean all the watch brands. And when I get something that I think is a great value or a ripoff, I'm going to tell you. You guys know I've made no secrets that I think luxury brands are a ripoff for what you're getting. Again, it doesn't mean you shouldn't buy them, it doesn't mean I don't like them, it doesn't mean they're not stylish, but I will n would never spend the money for a luxury brand. And now owning, I've done a couple of video reviews the other day of my uh, replica Omega and replica uh, Rolex. And I wanted to see in today's modern machining age, um, you know, I know what 20 years those those fakes look like. I want to see what you get now for 50 bucks. And it really is remarkable and incredible. And when I did that review and why I wanted to do that was because I kind of wanted to play dress up, you know what I mean? And wear something that, that, that I can kind of, convinced myself was real and authentic. Uh, and again, I know that it's not. I know that the fake Rolex Samaritan on my wrist is not real, but it is remarkable when wearing something like that that people can't tell the difference unless they physically inspected it and knew what to look for, that nobody notices it. Nobody notices the $8,000 Rolex on my wrist, right? Now, again, a fake Rolex, but it doesn't matter because it's all about perception and what people see and what people perceive. If they see you wearing a Rolex watch, again, there's, and I've done videos about, you know, what people think and believe, but nobody notices it. Nobody even knows it's on my wrist. So again, always buy things for your own enjoyment. Now, it doesn't mean I'm not going to wear that watch. It doesn't mean that it's not a, what I would call just a watch I... What, I don't want to use that word shitter because it's not, but it's more my inexpensive watch. I care about all my watches. So when I go boating or go out, the, you know, out, the, out of the woods or whatever I'm going to do, I really don't wear a watch because I just don't want to lose it. I don't want to damage it. Um, if I want to tell time, I'll wear a 99 cent fake G-Shock, right? I mean, or, or, or a Schemi or whatever the Schemi or Schemi, which is what I want to talk about today. Uh, another thing I want to talk about today. So sorry, it's really hot in my office right now, so bear with me. Uh, I'm just like, it's just, I am sweating my ass off. So, <laughs> again, I don't want, this isn't clickbait. I don't want to, you know, I'm not trying to uh, insult any other YouTubers, but I want to give my opinion and, and give you guys just my honest um Thoughts again on these YouTubers who review watches and have their own interests. They have they're they're kind of like you know bullies, and there are so many great brands out there. And people don't you don't have to spend a lot of money to get a killer watch that functions, looks good. If you want to have people perceive you as having money, that's why you buy luxury brands. Because of when people hear the name, and you have to kind of be a watch nerd to even, everybody knows Rolex, right? Omega, getting close. But not a lot of people know Patek. Not a lot of people know about, and again, I don't, don't jump to my throat and be like, lots of people know Fat Cat. I know a lot of people know, but I'm saying the average person, the person who isn't a watch person, may not have heard of those brands. You know, you have to be interested in watches to recognize those brands, right? And so a lot of these guys, like the time teller, it's constipated. And a lot of these other bullies out there who really are so over opinionated that they, they go as far as offending other, trying to offend or trying to insult people who like these other brands. Um, the time teller honestly is kind of like at the top of my list, top of my hit list uh, for guys who I just think are absolutely full of shit, you know? Um, and, and I don't, 
I'm not saying full of shit is in he that he doesn't believe this and he's lying to you, but these guys are lying to you about certain parts of the watch. So I want to do this video again because I just recently acquired, um, this is a Bursiger watch, but it's made by Pagani Design. And Pagani Design is another Chinese company uh, making awesome watches for an amazing price. And this idiot commented, he did a review, and, I, and this is kind of my rebuttal to a review he did explaining his stance on inexpensive watches. He most recently did a review of a Schemi, I think it's called, uh, Mudmaster replica, basically fake or homage, whatever you want to call it, um, uh, Mudmaster Casio. And that's one of his favorite watches. So he reviewed this $20 watch, and he pretty much tore it apart. Now, then he came back and said, well, I stand by, He got, I guess he got a lot of heat, which I... We don't really get heat on YouTube, guys, but supposedly a lot of heat, you know, a lot of comments. It's like big deal, dude. Not a big deal, right? It's good because, you know, we should all value people's opinions as long as they're respectful. Now, the Skimmy watch for tw under 20 bucks, I know, and the argument is like, like when I compare an Invicta to a Rolex, there is a big difference between comparing an Invicta to a Rolex and then comparing a Schemi to a Mudmaster. There is an obvious, a super obvious difference that you could tell with the quality. When it comes to Rolex, that's not the case. When you pick up a Rolex, these knuckleheads want you to believe that when you hold these two watches side by side, that you're gonna have some profound, amazing difference in quality. Yes, when you hold that Mudmaster next to a Schemi, you are going to feel an insane quality. Just like when you when I did my review on my, my um, replica diesel for 15 bucks. There is a huge difference in the quality you get from that watch compared to legitimate, authentic watch. There is a big difference with a, a, a 99 cent uh, fake G-Shock, B-Shock, A-Shock, whatever you want to call it. They're all over eBay. They're all over DHgate. They're all over uh, Alibaba, all those different websites. When you compare that to a regular legitimate 40 dollars Casio, there is a real difference that you can feel. And anybody with no knowledge of those two brands would be able to say, hey, you know, this one feels better. When you pick up a Rolex, those differences are so subtle. And I don't, I always pick on a Rolex. It's not just Rolex. I mean, Omega. I mean, uh, Grand Seiko, all those Patek, all those luxury brands, when you feel them in your hand, the average person who knows nothing about the watches is going to have a hard time distinguishing between which one costs $10,000, $40,000, and which one costs $100. So when you start looking, and again, my argument is that when you have a $400 noob super fake replica, you almost have to be a Rolex jeweler or dealer to be able to tell the difference from the real deal. So you can't argue anymore that somehow there's some elaborate state-of-the-art manufacturing that warrants charging $8,000 for the watch when it can be had for $400. That's with markup. So it's just, it's, it's just in the argument is that they don't want to admit that there's huge markup and that they want to basically make you believe that you're paying for this quality. They have to charge this because it's such an amazing quality watch. No, that's not the truth. Okay, so what I want to do, and now when you're looking at those extreme differences in price, now we got to look at closer differences. And when we look at watches that cost under $500, and again, price does not dictate, because I have watches that cost $2,000, and they're just, my $99 Pro Diver is just as nice. My Pagani Dunn is just as nice. So I want to come back, and the, the, the time teller stated that I stand by my original statement that Pagani, and what he said by the Pagani, because I guess he got a lot of backlash. Ooh, backlash, uh oh. Uh, and again, here's his insult too. It's not just Pagani, uh, he start, now he calls us clans. We have all these clans. Well, I think this guy's like a part of the nerd clan, right? Sorry, this is the truth, right? These guys always make excuses for their own behavior, for things they like, but yet somehow um, people who like Invicta were Invicta boys, right? We're not grown men, we're Invicta boys. Somehow we're adolescent that we like, and we're, we're just not on their level of collecting watches, so we're the Invicta boys. We're just Invicta like, we're Invicta collectors, we're watch collectors, we're, we're not boys, we're grown men. Now I'm sure there are younger dudes who have them too, but it's just another, you know, a passive aggressive insult. Uh, you have your Pagani clan. What about your snob-ass Rolex clans? What about your Rolex boys, right? There's idiots in every in every category of watch collecting and anything like there's idiots. There's idiots who think they're better than other people. There's idiots who think they know it all. And ultimately, like I always say, buy what you like, but you don't have to buy what you like. 
and then and then try to insult somebody else. I don't think there's anything wrong with Rolex. I do think though it is a extremely marked up, uh, highly. <laughs> highly marked up piece of jewelry that isn't worth it. You know, I, I don't, I'll never see the point. But that doesn't mean it's junk. It doesn't mean that it's garbage. It doesn't mean you look stupid for wearing it. It doesn't mean that I'm better than you because I know what a good value is and you're dumb for buying that. It just means that we like different things. And by all means, it's your money, so buy what you like, but don't come back and tell me what I should be doing with my money. Don't come back and tell me what, because when you start making it about quality, that's where you lose the argument. If you want to state that I bought this Rolex because it's a good quality watch, but you got the Rolex name, right? That's why you buy the watch, not because it's an investment. This argument, these guys just don't want to, and I don't mean all, I don't mean to overgeneralize. I'm saying a lot of these watch snobs are the guys who absolutely have to rationalize their stance on why that watch is better. And it's never about the name. It's always about, oh, this and, and the quality and the manufacturing, the, the story, the, the, the heritage. No, you bought it for the name. And I understand that now because when I wear even my fake that nobody knows the difference, right? That you know that somebody recognized they're going to be like, oh, they're immediately going to think. My thought process when somebody sees me, if somebody says what kind of watch, and I show them, and they say, oh, Rolex, they're going to immediately going to say, what does that guy do? There is a level of intrigue that comes along with wearing an expensive watch. And I think that's the real allure to brands like that. So, but I want to come back about getting back to cheaper brands like the Schemi and the Mudmaster. You're going to feel a, an extreme difference between that, those price points. Now, it doesn't mean that the scheme is some piece of shit. It just means it's a $20 watch. It is what it is. It's a great value for what you're getting. And it doesn't mean it's, it's disposable. It, nobody, all these guys want to dictate the longevity of these watches and they have no idea. I have 99 cent Casio or fake G-Shock, B-Shock, whatever they're called, that I got on eBay years ago just as a, just a, what we would call a beater watch. If I'm going to be doing something, I absolutely do not care. If I lost my $68 Victa, I'm gonna care about it. I'm gonna be pissed off about it. If I lose or break my 99 cent generic G-Shock, B-Shock, A-Shock, I, I, don't, I just don't have any feelings towards it at all. I'm like, damn, oh well. No big deal. Buy another one, 99 cents. That's disposable. A $68 watch to me is not disposable. And so this is the argument he made, is that he was saying that he stands by his original in the Pagani boys or Pagani clan, like that were some idiots, um, it's, it's had a big problem with him staying as garbage. He's only staying as garbage because he doesn't like it and he doesn't own it. The watch is far from garbage. And what I have here today is a brand that he, is an affordable brand that he likes Boulder. And I've reviewed several Boulder watches on this channel. I own the Boulder watch here, one of my forget the name offhand, I'll show you guys. And I have the Bursiger watch. Bursiger is a, is a brand owned by Pagani Design. It's exactly a Pagani Design watch, it just says Bursiger. Same thing. Uh, when, you get, when you get it, actually, here is the box it comes in, and here it is Pagani Design. So um, we're not going to get in the box because nobody really cares about the box. So. My point is, is that I want to compare these brands. This guy is the same guy who's going to tell you that this watch is Pagani trash and garbage. And he stands by his statement. And he tries to argue that he's making those, he's making judgments like this because of actual facts, things that he can pick apart. This is absolutely not true. Because if you like this Boulder watch, and you think this is a good value, and you think this is a good quality watch that's, you know, not a luxury brand, under $500, that, that you can get a lot of bang for your buck and you can get a great watch. Uh, he recommended, uh, what was the brand here? Dylos. He was talking that up. Because he likes it. Because he may own one. Because he may have worked them in the past. This brand, he's, uh, he's probably worked with. He owns Boulder Watch. He owns a Boulder Watch. He likes Boulder Watches. I can tell you right now, side by side, that this Pagani design watch and this Boulder, this is not trash. These watches are on par with one another. Everything about these two watches states, hey, this is a good quality watch for a great price without spending thousands of dollars. Um, now, this may not be your style with the rainbow bezel, Seiko NH35 movement. He also states that in his, actually, I think both these watches have the same movement. I think that the the Boulder has, yeah, Boulder has the same movement. So Boulder has the Seiko NH35, so does the Pagani Designer Burst Cigar watch. Um, everything about these is comparable, other than this one, the, the Boulder is made of brass. 
That's the only difference. This is 316L stainless steel. The fit, the finishing, the quality, I mean, and honestly, I like the I like the Burr Cigar or Pagani Design watch. We'll just call it Pagani Design. Not more. I like it more. I think it's a nicer looking watch. Doesn't mean I don't wear the bowler. Doesn't mean I don't like it. I'm just stating this its personal preference. But to sit here and, and say that this watch is good because I like it, but he won't come out and say that. He'll just be like, oh, it's trash. I stand by my assessment. No, you're lying. That's basically what it comes down to. It's and the people, I just don't know why they have to be so one-sided. And it's just it's very strange strange behavior to me. Why can't people like this say, hey, I'm not a Pagani design fan. I just don't like the looks. I'm more of a Rolex fan. I feel like their designs, which they are, are homage watches. They're copies. Um, and he called them cash cows. Like lots of other brands who make Rolex homage watches. Uh, we could even argue that Rolex is a homage to uh, to other companies, right? So it's just asinine. They always make excuses for their own opinions, but they try to defend their opinions with bullshit like quality. And it's not. That's a lie. So uh, he and he called these disposable watches. Oh well, you know my my put watches are not disposable. Okay. When you buy something, no matter what you spend for it, you want it to last, okay? Now, if you spent 99 cents, you may not be as concerned, but I can tell you, if I spend $50 and up for a watch, even under, I want it to last, but I'm gonna be pretty pissed off if it fails. Plain and simple. That doesn't mean that I can't afford a more expensive watch. I have 140 something watches. If I wanted to get rid of some of my watches, if I wanted to have spent money on a high end luxury timepiece, I would have done it years ago. I just don't see the point. When I can compare watches like this to my $2,000 Aqua Dive, thank you Aqua Dive, but the bottom line is that that Aqua Dive doesn't warrant a $2,000 price point. I know that Aqua Dive will probably never send me another watch. Do I feel great wearing it? Absolutely. Is it a great retro style design? Love micro brand watches. Love that, that very dated uh, vintage style dive watch. I love it. I love the watch. Okay. But it's $2,000. And when you feel the quality of that watch, it doesn't warrant $2,000. Now it always, again, price will be warrant, it be warranted by who is wearing it. If you like it enough and you need that watch, it may be worth it for you to spend that money and why people will spend Rolex. Well, it may, if it makes you happy, then it's worth it. But when you look at what you're getting for your money, in my opinion, you're, you're, there's a lot of markup there. Because when we look at just basic materials, 316L stainless steel, the movements, you know, an Eta movement may on paper be better than an H35, but does, does a few seconds here and there really matter? You know, it's not like they're stating, well, the NH35 is guaranteed to last you three weeks and the ETA movement is going to last you three years. No, we, nobody knows how long any of these things are going to last. So it's absolutely ridiculous. When they talk about, and when the time teller talks about the, uh, he talked about the poor manufacturing, nonsense, absolute nonsense. It is, stand, it is okay. Rolex states that it's, and I've, I've read online, I'm getting heated now, that, that the pip not lining up on many Rolex watches is within standards. A pip not lining up for $8,000? I have watches that cost 50 bucks to have the pip lined up. I don't have any watches in my collection of affordable watches that don't have a pip lining up, but yet for $8,000 for a luxury timepiece, that's acceptable? Absolutely absolutely ridiculous statement to make that the manufacturing uh, is just not up to par. The manufacturing on this Pagani design is on point with every boulder watch I've ever reviewed and it's $80. Now, again, that doesn't mean don't buy a boulder. That doesn't mean buy a Pagani over boulder. It just means that there is a lot of quality and a lot of markup and the quality does not dictate price. Manufacturers uh, you know, manufacturing costs dictate price. Uh, markup mainly dictate, dictates price. A Rolex does not cost $4,000 to make. Now, nobody knows how much, so I'm just speaking on my opinion, but um, no way in my heart do I feel that. And I feel like guys like this just, again, are always trying to find fake news in order to, to rationalize their stance when really they're just dicks. That's really what it comes down to. They're just over opinionated dicks. What I have is great. Everything I do is wonderful. And what everybody else does, oh, you should know, oh, it's better. So goddamn opinionated. It's disgusting. I want to throw up watches some of these fucks. So anyway, guys, that's my point. If you like Pagani Design, keep liking them. Um, I absolutely love Pagani Design. Another great channel. One more watch, I believe it's called. Um, 
amazing channel, huge fan of Pagani, is a real guy who reviews these watches with a real honest, <laughs> real honest thought process, okay? These other guys, Time Teller, uh, many other guys out there have uh, their own stores. They sell secondhand Rolex, they sell secondhand watches. They're never going to tell you that you can get a great value unless they're wearing it. If they're wearing it, they'll be like, oh, you get this $9 Casio. It's amazing. I don't doubt the Casio $9 watch is nice, but it's not. They're, again, they're making it sound like that $9 Casio is light years better than this scheme. Well, maybe it is better, but it's not. The, the, the scheme is not trash. The Pagani design is not garbage or trash. That's a complete lie. And the reason I want to say that is because a lot of times people are like, well, it's my opinion. I'm entitled to it. No, you can't make an opinion about something and then state something that the quality is on par is better and then state that this thing is exactly the same watch. It's somehow trash, but this brand is better. That doesn't make any sense. And that's a flat out bold faced lie. So remember guys, if you like Pagani design, Always wear what you like, buy what you like, but know that a lot of these scumbags out there are painting this picture of brands they don't like to be poor quality. And it's not the case, it's not the truth, it's a lie. I've compared a lot of watches on this channel at a lot of different price points, and I can tell you that the quality of most watches is on par. If you ever have a question, drop me a comment, drop me an email, I'm always here to help. I hope you enjoyed my rant video. It is hot as hell in here, and I gotta chill out. I get heated on this shit. Anyway, guys, have a wonderful evening. Subscribe to the channel, and take care.